Japan, 1986. A Japanese woman gave birth to a baby boy who is soon to become one of the most loved and hated judoka in the history of Japanese sports scene. This is a story of the strange and unexpected friendship between a Japanese and a Croatian man. By the end of the video essay, there will be no Japanese men involved, only Croatian. Sounds strange, right? Let me explain. Sato Siishi was a very promising talent for the Japanese judo scene and sport in general. From an early age he took up judo, guided by his father during the fifth year of his elementary school. He attended Kokushikan High School and then Kokushikan University in the Department of Physical Education to earn a degree of physical therapist. On August 15, 2008, he won a gold medal at the 100-plus category of the Beijing 2008 Summer Olympics. Satoshi is the youngest Olympic champion in the heavyweight division, while at the same time being the lightest in the heavyweight division. Satoshi was also the youngest All Japan champion, a competition which the Japanese hold in higher esteem than the Olympics and is watched by the Emperor of Japan as well. Not only this, but the All Japan is now an open weight competition, which Satoshi won while weighing under 100 kilograms himself. Without a doubt, Ishii is one of the most accomplished men in the history of Judo. So where is the problem? The problem lies in the old traditional training methodology of Japanese Judoka. Satoshi spoke out on his traumatic experience during his early childhood when he prepared for the Olympics. He said he didn't earn his cauliflower ears from the grappling, as many MMA and wrestling practitioners do. Instead, he received it from his judo trainer. According to Satoshi, his training was very traditionally strict. On one occasion, Satoshi was too tired to resume the training and wanted to rest, but his old school trainer thought of this as disrespectful to his training methodology, so he hit young Satoshi with a dumbbell across his ears, causing them to rupture and form cauliflower ears. Satoshi doesn't talk too much about his judo training days, since those days were traumatic and full of hardships for the young MMA fighter. After winning the gold medal in judo, Ishii expressed his wishes to apply his talents in the sports of mixed martial arts, also known as MMA, to the dismay of Japanese Judo Federation. Ishii received a lot of hate from the Judo community for retiring from a traditional art and switching to MMA, a sport that was viewed less worthy in the eyes of the traditional Japanese martial arts community. He used to receive hate mail and threats so often he started to grow resentment for the Japanese judo scene. He didn't understand why a sport to which he dedicated most of his life to has turned his back on him to the point of receiving hate letters. This is where the story becomes interesting. When Satoshi was young, he went to see a fortune teller with his friends. The fortune teller told young Satoshi that his life will be changed by the MMA fighter and pride veteran, Mirko Krokop. At that time, Satoshi didn't understand the shaman's prophecy since he was not yet interested in competing in MMA. Later in his life, Satoshi received an offer to fight Mirko Krokop at IGF-2 in Tokyo, Japan. Upon hearing this offer, Satoshi, now a seasoned MMA fighter, thought this will be an opportunity to change his life. If the fortune teller was right, Satoshi would win and become a huge MMA star by defeating the legend of the sport. On August 23rd at IGF2, despite being a heavy favorite due to his years and judo experience, Ishii was defeated by Mirko Krokop via Dr. Stoppage, losing the IGF championship in the process. After his Krokop loss, Satoshi started doubting his MMA career a belief that Grokop is supposed to end his endeavors to become an MMA star started creeping in his mind. 
But after competing for the most of his life, Satoshi refused to believe that Mirko will be the beginning of his downfall as a fighter. A chance to rematch Krokop arrived and Satoshi took it without hesitation. Hoping to prove himself and the shaman is right by defeating the K1 and Pride legend. Satoshi once again faced Mirko Krokop in a rematch at December 31st, 2014 for the IGF Championship, but ended up losing the fight via TKO at the end of the second round. After losing to Krokop for the second time, Satoshi realized what the fortune teller actually meant when he told him his life will be changed by Mirko Krokop. Swallowing his pride, Satoshi decided to contact Mirko Krokop, asking Krokop to allow him to visit his training facilities in Croatia. Over the years, Krokop made a name for himself, thus attracting Europe's young talent and prospect to his MMA facility, giving them free lessons in MMA and offering them to grow as fighters without paying for training and using the gym. Upon his arrival to the Krokop team, Satoshi was shocked by the hospitality and friendliness of his former MMA opponent and their training partners, including Stipe Dervish, one of the most famous Croatian professional now retired boxers. Stipe became a world boxing champion back in his prime and had offered Satoshi to help him expand on his striking abilities, also for no charge. Satoshi was confused by their refusal to accept his money but ended up staying for the training camp to see what was so special in the Krokop team. He decided with all his heart to understand what the fortune teller's true meaning actually was. According to Satoshi, he lived in Brazil, USA and the Netherlands prior to coming to Croatia. He said he never received such hospitality in his life before meeting the Krokop team. Moved by the new formed friendship, Satoshi decided to permanently move to Zagreb, Croatia, so he could train every day with his new MMA team. Satoshi became the trainer for a Croatian Judo Olympic team and is organizing and performing Judo seminars for charity purposes. Satoshi said this is his way of giving back to the community that welcomed him with open arms and called him a part of the team. He actually ended up applying for and receiving the Croatian citizenship, thus giving up on his own Japanese citizenship. Satoshi had this to say about his Croatian friend. Krokop is my best friend, my brother and my father. As Satoshi continues to compete in the sport of MMA, he is doing so with Krokop team in his corner. In the end, the unlikely friendship between two men from two different sides of the world was received with love and support from the Croatian MMA community as well as the Croatian community in which Satoshi now permanently lives with. Satoshi competes wearing the Krokop signature MMA boxers and is proudly representing Croatia on the world's MMA stage along with Krokop in his corner effectively combining their lifelong experience in judo MMA and high-level boxing. They became best friends and as such they're the perfect example of how life can take a totally unexpected turn and lead us to places we never thought we would eventually call our new home. Their story inspired me and hopefully will inspire you, the viewer, to think outside of the box and strive hard to reach your goals in life. Satoshi did it and so can we. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.